Well, what if instead of making pancakes, we're going to make molecules? So we can think of that balanced chemical equation we've been learning about as essentially a recipe for how to make the products. So here's a simple recipe. Three hydrogen molecules and one nitrogen molecule, and we can put those together and do stuff to it, and we can get two ammonia molecules out of that. Like making pancakes, right? You take certain amounts of ingredients, except we call them reactants, and they combine and they form our product, but the product is a chemical instead of a pancake. So from this equation, we can get mole ratios because we don't measure things in numbers of atoms and numbers of molecules because the numbers end up being way too large. And so we use the chemist's dozen, the mole. So when it says 3H2, we can interpret that as 3 hydrogen molecules, or we can stick a unit in here and say that's 3 moles of hydrogen reacting with 1 mole of nitrogen to form 2 moles of ammonia. You okay with that? It's like sizing up a recipe. What if we were making pancakes for the football team? We're not going to make just a single recipe. We might want to make a dozen, right? So two dozen eggs would give us five dozen pancakes, right? That's all we're doing here is we're just multiplying by the same number. So we call it moles. And so then we get ratios of moles. So what are some of the mole ratios we could make out of this? Three moles of hydrogen. Two, two moles of ammonia. We could also flip that one upside down. How about one mole of nitrogen to two moles of ammonia? We could write uh, two moles of ammonia. Wait, I don't want to do that. Oops. Okay, sorry. We could also write three moles of hydrogen to one mole of nitrogen. We can relate any two of these things. We can relate the reactants to each other. So in the, in the recipe, well, if we're going to use two eggs, how many cups of flour do we need? That sort of a thing. Well, if I'm, if I'm going to have three moles of hydrogen, how many moles of nitrogen? Well, for every three moles of hydrogen, I need one mole of nitrogen. We can relate a reactant to a product. And so I've got these three different ones, and then we could also flip them upside down, because you can do that with conversion factors. Any questions? So if we have three moles of nitrogen and plenty of hydrogen, <coughs> How much ammonia can we make? This is like the we have eight eggs, how many pancakes question. Well, let's apply dimensional analysis. We're given that we have three moles of nitrogen, and we want to find moles of ammonia. OK, so um, our path really is moles of nitrogen to moles of ammonia. And then we put the units in here so they work out. We want moles of nitrogen to cancel. So this should be familiar. And then this mole-to-mole -mole ratio comes from the coefficients in the balanced chemical equation. So here I have NH3. I'm just going to look what's the coefficient in front of NH3. What's well, a 2? So I'm going to write 2 in front of NH3. And here I've, I need N2 in the bottom. What's the coefficient in front of N2? One. So I'm going to put a one there. How's that for an easy way to get a conversion factor? 
the numbers are just sitting there in the balanced chemical equation. So I'm going to end up with six. <coughs> six moles of ammonia. <coughs> and this is one that you can probably do just thinking about it. Because you say, well, uh, in, in this relationship here, I've got one mole of ammonia, and this is three times as much. So then I'm going to get three times as much, and so it will be two times three. And you can think it out that way. But you need to learn how to write it down like this. Um, how many moles of nitrogen are needed to completely react with 7.13 moles of hydrogen? This sort of a number, 7.13, this is going to be a little harder to just kind of do in your head. Well, what's our path? What are we starting with? Moles of hydrogen. And what do we want to know? Moles of nitrogen. So that tells us what to do with our units. We have 7.13 moles of hydrogen. And my path has one arrow. And it's going to moles of nitrogen. So I put that in the numerator. And I'm going to put moles of hydrogen in the denominator because I want those to cancel out. Now my units are set. I look for the numbers. I'm going to the balanced chemical equation. So I've got nitrogen. In front of nitrogen is an understood 1. So there's a 1. And in front of hydrogen is a 3. So I'm going to put a 3 here. I can't do 7.13 divided by 3 in my head. I could get close, but not, not close enough. 7.13 divided by 3. How many significant figures should that answer have? Three. These coefficients are exact because they ultimately relate to numbers of particles, which are counting numbers, and those are exact. So the significant figures is limited by my starting number. And so if I round this, well, let me write it down unrounded. 2, 3, 7. Um, that's my third significant figure. And then I'm just going to write down two more um, as extras. And then if I round that, I'm going to get 2.38 moles of hydrogen. Any questions? Yeah, it would be nitrogen. <laughs> I just drew the little line at the wrong angle. Thank you. Yes? That's a good question. On an exam, will I be trying to trick you by giving you an unbalanced chemical equation and making you balance it? It's possible. It's possible. Um, I'm more likely to give you a problem where you have to balance an equation and separately giving you a problem where you need to use the coefficients. Uh, that sort of trickery is, is usually reserved for Chem 1A, where we do actively try to trick students on exams. Mm -hmm. Here, I'm, I'm not really trying to trick you. You're welcome. Any other questions? Let's do an example here. Water forms when hydrogen gas reacts explosively with oxygen gas according to the balanced equation given here. How many moles of water result from the complete reaction of 24.6 moles of oxygen? Assume that there is more than enough hydrogen. This is a dimensional analysis problem. So we look at the units and we say, well, what are we, what are we given? We're given 24.6 moles of oxygen. So I'm starting with moles of oxygen. What are they asking me to find? Moles of water. Mole to mole ratios can always be done in one step. Don't make things more difficult than they need to be. So 24.6 moles of oxygen. I have one arrow. I need one fraction. Moles of hydrogen, 2O. 
moles of H2O uh, go up there, and moles of O2 down here. So the units work out. My numbers come from up here. In the numerator, I have moles of water. In my equation, it says 2 moles of water. So I'm going to write a 2 in front of H2O. I need the number in front of oxygen. I go up here, there's no number in front of oxygen. It's an understood 1. So I end up with 24.6 times 2. Did something wrong. My calculator didn't like that. Uh, 49.2. Moles of water. Is that the correct number of significant figures? Yeah. I'm limited by my initial number of 24.6. Any questions?